<laughs> Welcome again. I'm Dr. Charlene Nicely. I've been a facilitator with uh, doing residential programs with the Monroe Institute since 1993. I took my Gateway Voyage in 1989, and at that time, Gateway and Guidelines were the only programs available. I am very excited to be here today with my dear friend and colleague, Scott Taylor, to talk with you about how powerful the Gateway Voyage is and how it can help you become the person you truly wish to be, how you can access more of who you are. I'm very glad to introduce Scott Taylor, EDD, who became president and executive director of the Monroe Institute in 2019. So he's had an exciting couple of years with a lot of changes. His vision, a lot of changes due to all of the changes in our environments. His vision for Monroe is its expanded global distinction as the world's go-to organization for exploring human consciousness. Scott attended Gateway Voyage in 1983 and became an outreach trainer in 1985 and then a residential trainer in 1998. Dr. Taylor is a known researcher and speaker in the field of near-death studies. Scott had a shared NDE near-death experience in 1981 and has been committed to exploring and raising awareness of near-death experiences ever since. In fact, he wrote his doctoral dissertation on how near-death experiencers live in unity. Scott is the voice and author of six best-selling Into the Light audio albums that explore the intersection of hemisync technology and near-death experiences. Dr. Taylor is an experienced business leader and entrepreneur. He was CEO of Brett's Department Stores, founder of the Expanded Awareness Institute, and marketing vice president of Phoenix Biocomposite Startup. As a professor and business mentor for the state of Minnesota, Scott spent 20 years mentoring thousands of small business owners and nonprofit organizations. He earned a BA from Coe College in Cedar Rapids, Iowa, and an MBA from Kellogg Graduate School of Business at Northwestern University in Chicago. He later earned a Minister of Spiritual Counseling degree from the New Seminary in New York and a Doctorate in Educational Leadership from the University of St. Thomas in St. Paul, where he studied people who had had near-death experiences. Personally, Scott is passionate about the sport of curling. Mm -hmm. He is married to the love of his life, Ann Hunter. And I have been fortunate enough to know Scott for several years now and to enjoy him, both his kindness and his knowledge, both of which he'll be sharing with us today. So welcome, Scott. Hey, thank you, Charlene. And on the reverse, I think that the folks that are watching this should know that you and I have teamed up to teach the near-death intensive for the last eight years or so. So um, Charlene and I have, have taught together a bunch, and I'm really glad that she could join us today. Yay! I'm glad too, thanks. Now, you're not really here to hear us chat and reminisce. You're here to get your questions answered about how the Gateway Voyage can help you. We've got a couple of questions already in the Q&A, so that's the way you can let me know what it is you would like Scott to talk about. I'm gonna to moderate today and feed your questions to Scott. So most of the time, um, it will be Scott, type, uh, Dr. Taylor, it'll be Scott talking. <laughs> So how about if you get us going and tell us what the Gateway Voyage is 
Uh, what will I get out of the Gateway Voyage? And how can I expect that this will change me? I love all those questions, and it's a great way to start. Um, the Gateway Voyage is a five and a half day virtual retreat where you will learn how to prepare yourself to enter into deep states of meditation and then enter into and hold these expanded states of awareness. You'll get a whole bunch of tools and techniques so that you can navigate around the non-physical universe. And um, I think one of the most important things that Bob and Ro did for us is to give us a map to explore the non-physical universe. So we know where we're going and we know how to get there. Um, one of the nice things is, is that you'll have guides along the way that would be both physical and non-physical. Um, our physical guides are the, our trainers and um, our colleagues are, of course, the other participants that will be in your class. So you have um, a way of, of knowing what you're doing and you're going to be really supported um, as you go through this. And so you just don't have to do it alone. Um, so I like that last part that you asked me, Charlene, where it was... Um, you know, how am I going to be changed? Well, I think that's a really important point that you will be changed as a result of taking um, this course. Um, I think, excuse me, <clears throat> that you'll get a real sense of who you are, both as a physical and non-physical being. And once you understand that, I mean, really, you know, get it out of your head, but you really understand it in every fiber of your being, it will set you free to live life more fully here in the physical. Okay. We're getting so many questions. Sorry, I kind of got distracted there. <laughs> um, and one of the big questions is, how is this different from the online um, gateway voyage that you can take or from the gateway voyage CDs. Actually, that was the question. Uh, Someone has the gateway voyage CD package and how is this going to be different? And then how will they know when they're ready? Um, so we have uh, the CD, the take home course is called gateway experience as opposed to gateway voyage which we are teaching virtually. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. I also started with the, with the take-home CDs. Excuse me. I've got a frog in my throat here. Hang on. <clears throat> ah, that's better. Um, so the, the take-home um, CDs are really wonderful. They will get you started. They will acquaint you with the, um, the various map that we have, we call them focus levels. Um, so we teach you how to go to four different focus levels um, with that original gateway experience. And um, they will teach you the tools and techniques uh, for navigating the non-physical universe. So that, that part is always is really similar to um, the virtual class, but a virtual class has a couple more things that I think are just critical. Um, one is trainers. You'll have two live trainers. The course is live. And as a result, as you come up against something and you've got a question, there's somebody to question. Like, what's this about? How do I think this through? Um, the, the trainers will also give you um, the confidence to go out and um, explore the non-physical universe using the tools that you have. Um, they're a font of wisdom. Um, the trainers that we have with us right now have been doing it a long time. So they're really talented in that way. And they're also talented in that um, the trainers that have been with us, uh, we're, we're always are in this continually um, refining how it is that we present material. So um, they're really good at um, explaining what it is that happens when you enter into the non-physical universe. And that can be a little disorienting at the beginning. Another big difference is that we have um, 
a support from the people that are there. Um, and that means that, um, let's just put it this way, um, gateway, when you're, when you're done with an exercise, you gather and you share what happened. And in the process of that sharing, all of a sudden you look around and you go, wow, he went there, she did this, this is possible. And all of a sudden it just kind of blows open the doors of what it, what it is that we can do in the, phys, in the non-physical universe. So I like that in that, you know, if Mary can do it, I can do it. And then people kind of get this, this sense of um, there's more than they thought. So that's another reason that trainers come in handy because they've seen hundreds and hundreds of people go through the gateway experience and they've heard and they've seen all of these stories. So they can, they can guide you if you have a certain interest. Thanks, Charlene. That was a good question. Well, and Scott, I'm really glad you mentioned the group because often the other people in the group provide a real sense of community mm -hmm. uh, that you keep with, not just making close connections during the time that you're on that virtual class, but keeping in touch afterwards. Um, it's like finding your tribe. And that, I think, really feeds your soul as you're saying, how do I fit in with this? And how do I have somebody who understands these things that I can talk with, not just today, but later in my life? Uh, yep. Many people form very close friendships from people they have met either at Monroe or on virtual uh, courses that Monroe has offered. So, yeah, one of, one of the things that Charlene says all the time is um, it's really nice to have a tribe so that when you discuss these things, people don't look at you like you have two heads. <laughs> I, I've seen so I love that. <laughs> I've seen several comments in the chat about um, I've had these profound experiences that have made such a difference in my life. Is this possible? Absolutely, that's possible to have very profound um, spiritual, non-physical experiences, connections with non-physical beings, and you to get to define what that is. At Monroe, we don't tell you, yes, it's an angel, no, it's your grandmother. No, whoever or whatever you understand it to be, we are here to help you in your explorations. Um, we're not going to be able to answer all of those uh, I had this kind of wonderful, numinous experience. Is that possible? Let me just say yes. If you had the experience, it is possible. And with the focus levels and the support of the audio guidance, um, that's what our programs are about, is helping you gain some ability to intentionally reconnect with some of these conscious expansion states. I think that's really important, Charlene, that last bit that you said there. Um, I came to the Monroe Institute because I'd had a shared near-death experience, and I entered into this amazing non-physical universe that was filled with light and love, and it was such an extraordinary experience that I knew that if I'd done it once, I can do it again. And I think that's the secret here is that we teach you the tools and techniques so that these don't have to be one-off experiences that you can um, go back and figure out how to navigate your way there again so that um, you realize that this is a, a permanent part of your skill set. Mm -hmm. So next question, do we still teach Gateway and why? because we have lots of other classes that are now offered. What about Gateway makes it special or important? Yes, we, we still teach Gateway. Um, and the Gateway that we teach today is markedly different than the one that we uh, took, well, that I took in 1983 and you took in 1989. Um, uh, the more we teach it, the more we re refine it. So it is not your grandfather's gateway. Um, just as a point, we now use more powerful audio. 
um, technology than we did back then. Um, we have advanced teaching techniques, so we have a better way of explaining how to navigate in the non-physical universe. And we now have this enormous map of the non-physical universe. So there is, you know, many more places to, to visit, lots more things to do. Just back up a little bit. Um, Gateway was the original course that was designed by Bob Monroe. Um, and it all came out of this whole idea. You may remember that he wrote the original book on out-of-body experiences. In fact, he got to name he got to give it the name, you know, that's what he did. And he got to define what it is to be um, in an out of body state. Well, when that book broke, it created such interest that he was, he, he just had to create something to teach his tools and techniques to other people. He'd been doing serious out of body exploration for at least a decade and a half. Uh, prior to that. So he had quite a set of understandings and tools that helped him um, uh, navigate, and he was willing to pass those on to us. And so the origins of this are with our founder. Uh, the tools and techniques that we teach are, are his with some, some lovely additions later. So there's the, the core of what Bob taught us is, is there. And we have improved on it over the last 40 years. Yes, this is not your grandfather's gateway. No, it's not. Um, in fact, we've improved on it, not just in our technique and skill in being able to present the exercises, but some of the exercises have been uh, replaced and all of the audio uh, support has all been changed and updated. Yep. We've got some concerns that are being expressed about, um, I've not had an OBE and I would like to. Um, I've already had some experience with uh, energy healing processes. Would this still be of value to me? Um, so if you could kind of talk to some of the folks who have a little bit of knowledge of the expanded consciousness realms, how would Gateway be of use for them? I love that question. So thank you. Um, you know, I read Bob's book before I came to. And when I showed up to do my Gateway, you know, I told the trainers, I want to have a, an experience like Bob Monroe had. And they sat me down and, and very gently told me that, Scott, that was Bob Monroe's experience. You get to have yours. And that's an interesting part of what we do at the Monroe Institute is that we give you a whole raft of tools and techniques for um, leaving your, your physical body. And we now know that there is a, a whole spectrum of ways in which to do that. It's not just one way, not just like what Bob Monroe did. And so we have um, broadened considerably the, what it means to have an out-of-body experience and, and how to do that successfully. Um, we have um, partnered with some terrific teachers, so like Bill Buhlman, who um, has uh, very generously shared his techniques. And so they are incorporated into some of the work that we do. Um, but um, the idea that we can, um, let me pause, hang on. I, I wanna go back to that first part, you know, it's like, how would this help? Um, one of the things that we know is that people from all over the world, from all kinds of religious traditions come to the Monroe Institute because they want to learn another technique of meditation. They want to learn something that would enhance their own, their own practice. It's, it's one of the, our founding principles at Monroe is that we try to do our work with as little dogma as possible. And so that when people come, they are welcomed from whatever tradition. And when they leave, they have enhanced skill sets. And I 
I believe that to be true, um, whatever it is that you're learning. There was a time when um, many of you might know the Barbara Brennan School. And Barbara and Bob Monroe were, were wonderful friends. And um, many, many of their students would come to um, the Monroe Institute to enhance their skill sets and healing because it gave them a little extra juice um, when they were um, uh, doing their work and it allowed them to enter into the states of healing um, more easily. And it allowed them to uh, be more effective. So I think that's the, the answer is that if you've had some kind of experience or you want to do something um, more, say with healing, uh, Monroe Institute is really good that way for helping um, enhance those skills that you had and then giving you um, new ones that you might not even have thought about before. Yes, absolutely. And just as a foil to that, you came having already had an experience. It's true. I came to Gateway from a strict uh, religious background that said meditation is dangerous and <laughs> should not be done. And so I had to go through all of my, is this safe? Is it not? Kind of questions that I had been raised with. But I found that the tools and techniques didn't bring up those issues for me and that I was able to open to the relaxation, to the possibilities and had tremendous experiences in Gateway um, that were life changing for me because it was no longer what am I being told I ought to believe or I ought to see or hear in whatever my at that point, it was prayer um, is going to be. But it became, this is my experience. This is what's real for me. And of course, it has changed and modified with more experience. We've got a couple of people asking about their experiences where they either have difficulty visualizing mm. or they can't see. They just see vague colors or clouds. Yep and that they're not sure they're doing it right. <laughs> and if you can't visualize and you don't get much from like the introduction to uh, the, I've, I've lost the name of it. It's the introduction meditation class that we do online. Would the virtual class be of value if you have, feel like you really haven't got it yet. Yep. I, I just smile because I've been in that spot and I and can so relate to it. Um, but one, one of the things that I know about teaching Gateway is that the universe has a way of, um, of smiling on us and asking us to do things that we maybe hadn't done before. So this is what I mean by that. Um, we know this, all right, so this is Scott Taylor's perspective, okay? This is not like official Monroe dogma. But in, in my worldview, when you're getting information from the non-physical universe, it's coming to you as in the original language, the original language of the universe, whatever you wanna call that. And then when it comes, when that information comes in, it's paired up with, uh, the memories and the metaphors that we have stored away in our head. And it tries to match those up and deliver that to us. And so um, we very often uh, might not have the words or the concepts for what, what's coming in at us. And so the universe tries to um, help us by giving us a, a different way to look at things. Here's what I mean. We know that when you have the headphones on and you are a willing participant, you are in a focus level, full stop. There's no, there's no alternative to that. If you have the headphones on, you're listening and you're a willing participant, you are in focus 10. 
That's just the way the audio technology works. But the wonderful part about Monroe is that um, you'll learn how we uh, perceive things because we can perceive things six different ways. I mean, we have our five physical senses, so you might perceive it visually or not. You might perceive it kinesthetically, you know, in your, in your body. You might perceive it with your hearing, with your smell, with your taste. And that all important, you could experience it with an intuitive hit. So it just shows up and you know the answer. You don't know how you know the answer, but you just do. And so one of the things that we coach people on in the gateway and encourage people to do is to check in with all of the different ways that you can uh, perceive information that's coming from the non-physical universe. Because if you, um, um, well, one of my favorites was a woman who wasn't getting anything, any, anything. And she desperately came to Gateway because she wanted to talk to her mother. And what she kept getting was the taste of gin. And that was her mother's favorite drink. And through that sense of taste, the connection was made. And it's like that, where sometimes the universe challenges us a little bit and says, you know, you don't have quite the right concept, Scott, for us to give you this. So we're going to give it to you using a perceptual lens that is different than you normally do, because it will make you think differently about what it is we're trying to say. So I think that's, that's a good place on that one, Charlene. Yes. And this leads right into the next question that I'm combining several of them here that says, please say more about the protocols and experiences you're talking about, what those experiences might actually be like, um, which kind of goes along with what can you get from the gateway experience? Uh -huh. Okay. So in the gateway experience, um, we have, um, we teach you four focus levels, which is our way of saying there's four different spots on the map to um, have you go and explore. Um, focus 10, we use numbers, no particularly good reason, but we just do. Um, actually, they carry a lot less cultural baggage. That's why Bob used numbers, but, you know, so anyway, focus 10 is mind awake, body asleep. It's that it's that sense where you can have your mind bright awake and clear and then just your body just kind of drifts away and becomes not important anymore. So that makes it easier for you to explore the non-physical universe because you just don't care about your physical body that much anymore. And Bob did all of his original out-of-body experience um, work out of Focus 10. Focus 12 is the state of expanded awareness. And there, when you experience that, you can actually feel that your, your perceptor antennas, you know, that it's like your non-physical body just gets bigger and bigger and bigger. And you can start to perceive things that aren't close to you. Um, you know, there's a, a church a couple of miles away and you can hear the bells of that church going up. So you lose this sense of, of space. Focus 15 the third spot on the map. This is the void. It is a magnificent place. It's the place of source where all things exist before they come into form. And that's another whole discussion. And focus 21 is uh, the bridge state. And so that's the last vibra vibratory rate. I'm sorry, let me say it again. It's the last vibratory state before you leave this physical universe. And so what happens is that those people who are non-physical, they'll lower their vibratory rate. We raise ours up to the bridge state and it's here that we can connect. So uh, we can connect with dead relatives, entities that have never been human. Um, you know, all of that takes, can take place in 21 much more easily. Did I answer that question, Charlene, or did I get off on a rabbit hole? Well, you sort of answered the question. Do it again. <laughs> I was saying what kind of experiences, and yes, 
These are experiences that we can have at each of the focus levels. And in fact, just being able to intentionally go to a focus level to expand and hold our awareness in that expanded state, recognize what's happening, bring that information back and intentionally go and come back mm -hmm. is yeah. incredibly powerful and beneficial in your everyday life as well as in your meditation. I think the thing that happened for me out of my gateway, when I, when I came home, I found that my intuition was just like I had a whole new set of antenna and it was really heightened. And that was incredibly valuable to me in my uh, personal life, you know, and in my business life. And all of a sudden I began to understand things differently because I had uh, an additional sense, additional amount of information. Um, I think that uh, what that did for me was be able to say, I am, I have these capabilities that I didn't know I had before. And now they're part of me and I can start to use them. And then sets in that whole curiosity thing. Oh my gosh. It's like, if I can do this, what else can I do? And um, that's, the, that's the beauty of it. So if we're talking about the kinds of experiences, I think in, the shorter answer is um, you begin to learn more about who you are as a non-physical being, who you are as a physical being, and then how, they, how the two of them relate to each other. Um, so you get to understand more of what it means when people say total self. That's, that is worth its weight in gold. That is the journey of self-discovery. It is, absolutely. Um, and some people are going to get that as intuitive feelings. Some will hear a song or maybe a voice, and that will connect for them with what it is they're looking for. Some people see visions. Um, we use in our uh, exercises, we'll use visual cues, you know, imagine the color red. Some people have a taste rather than a vision. So if you feel like you're not visual, but you're kinesthetic, you feel things in your body, good for you. These are all different ways we connect with our intuition, with our non-physical self, with the all of who we are. Um, now we've had a couple of people asking about the audio signals that we use, the uh, special music, the, I like the way Jess phrased it, please say more about the powerful audio. So maybe you could comment on that because that is one of the things that's really unique to the Monroe yeah, Institute. It's true. Um, back when Bob Monroe started out, he was looking for a way to help him do the mind awake body asleep part. And and so that focus 10 area. And so he started playing with different audio signals to um, help him do that. And he discovered that binaural beats were a great way to do that. And binaural beats, uh, you can Google it on the internet. There's all kinds of descriptions, but essentially what it means is that by using binaural beats, um, our brains um, stop acting as two individual hemispheres, but instead, they start to act as, as one unit. So the right and the left brain start to work together as a whole. That is a really powerful antenna to start interpreting some of the, um, uh, the information that's coming from the non-physical universe. So that was kind of the origin of what it is that, that we're talking about back at the beginning, this, um, the idea of the brain working as a whole. And as such, that allowed us a portal into the non-physical universe because it was really good at picking up signals or information. Well, since then, um, we have discovered that certain frequencies are better at giving you certain kinds of information. Uh, Bob's genius was that it isn't just like a single beat, you know, binaural beat. He, he discovered that if you layer these binaural beats, um, it gives us access or gives us portals into different parts of the non-physical universe. So it opened up 
um, there was different focus levels and we now have a lot more focus levels than we did, you know, back when he was starting. Yeah, that guy. Um, so um, these binaural beats mixed with additional frequencies that we now use, um, we now have different techniques. Um, binaural beats mixed with, uh, and the width is now also, sometimes the binaural beats are down. We, we have probably, uh, we start out with one technology, we probably have 50 now. Depending upon what it is that we want to teach you, um, we can more easily take you there um, with using um, audio technology that, you know, that we've developed over the years. We have, and we are continuing to develop new technology, and we are continuing to do uh, scientific research, both at the Institute itself, uh, not so much right now because of COVID and not being able to meet residentially, but we have the research continuing, um, some in virtual, some in other locations. Uh, but I think it's important to realize that the audio signals that we use continue to be developed to support you in your explorations more specifically for the kind of experience that you want and more effectively. Um, in fact, uh, some of the programs themselves, you go in and you get hooked up to uh, a brain mapping machine and you get to see what your particular experience looks like on the graph. Yeah. Now, yeah. we had a couple of people, I'm sorry, I'm interrupting. Go ahead, Scott. Oh, it, that's called our discovery program and it's available for Gateway graduates. And, and it's true, we have, we have this little helmety thing, you know, that you put on and it's got all the leads. So it's a, it's a EEG and, um, and we can watch what the brain does as you do certain kinds of tasks like remote viewing, what happens when you get a, a, a great hit, a, you know, a, a number five hit on there. What was the brain doing when it was going on? And, and the answers are, are really intriguing, especially, all right, I'll give you a hint. On the, um, on the remote viewing one, um, what happens when people are really good at making hits and we watch what happens on the EEG, the EEG just goes silent. It's like our consciousness just moves out of the way in, in order to have the information come in. So it just steps aside in order for the information to come in. I wouldn't have guessed it like that. I thought maybe it was a certain frequency or something. Nope, not like that. So it's one of those surprises that um, we have discovered with research over the years. And that research then has not only practical application for the people, the sound engineers developing the signals, but for us as supporters, encouragers, the facilitators of the class to be able to help you go, okay, what happened? What did you perceive? What did you experience? Okay, great. Hold it. Hold it. Look at it from this perspective. Let your left brain get quiet and calm, kind of step out of the way, and then see what comes up. If it's just the flavor of blue, then acknowledge that. And we help you learn how to understand what you're perceiving and then to perceive it more fully. Yep, that's a good, that's a good point. The, the information that we get from the non-physical universe often comes to us in metaphor. And I think that's where um, Charlene and the other trainers at the Monroe Institute are really good at um, helping you decipher what it is that metaphor means for you. Because, you know, the, the metaphors I have stored in my head are a whole lot different than the ones that are stored in your head or stored in Charlene's. So it's not like any one of us can sit there and go, oh, a blue tree, that means X. Well, it means X to me, but it means something completely different to Charlene. So it's the guidance that um, live trainers can give you on how to decipher. And usually, you know, this information comes at, you know, multiple levels. So it's how do you peel the onion in a way that keeps you um, 
uh, keeps you, but allows you to get a fuller understanding of the information that's coming at you. We've got a couple of practical questions here. Yeah. Um, if my senses, physical senses don't work perfectly, can I still benefit, for example, if I'm deaf or I'm hard of hearing or differential hearing, mm -hmm. will I be able to use the audio technology? And someone else talks about, I went blind 27 years ago. Could I still do it? So if your physical senses are not working to their maximum, can you still use the Gateway Voyage? Um. And I, again, I just smile because I, I have, I have some hearing loss here. So that whole differential healing, hearing thing, and then I've got tinnitus going on. So um, the, the short answer is if your nerves in your ears, um, you know, the, are, are still good. I mean, your ear, you know, the cochlea might be damaged, but the, the nerves to your brain, if they're still good, um, you know, listening you can listen through your mastoid bones on both sides and it works great. It works really well. So um, that's one of those, please check with us. Um, we've had a number of people with, with hearing loss and as long as the nerves still good, they're good to go. Um, and what was the second question, Charlene? Someone who went blind, could oh. they still benefit? Oh yeah, absolutely. Yeah. We, it's, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. It, in fact, we've um, had some really interesting experiences with people who have been blind since birth and have come to the Institute and started doing this work. And they, and they started to perceive in a visual way, which is, of course, not part of their, of their history. And um, uh, that, you, just, you just get a little teary-eyed when that kind of thing happens. So it's one of those, please check with us. Um, and as I talked about before, you know, even if you don't perceive anything all week visually and it comes in through taste or smell or kinesthetic, that's great. That's great. You know, and, and igniting that intuitive sense that you have could be worth its weight in gold. And so there's just so many ways to perceive information coming from the non-physical universe and then, you know, combinations of those too. We have some people who um, are concerned that they've been working at this for a while and they're not sure that they're getting clear information or valuable information. If they come uh, to a virtual gateway, will they get anything of value? How will they know? Now I've got an idea. Okay, I, I'll, you know what, I'm going to, let's switch the tables on this. You go first and then I'll go second. <laughs> yeah, because I've been thinking about it since I had the question there. I have had a couple of people who came and were at the residential program and generally they came because their spouse was there and they're going, <laughs> yeah. I don't know anything about this. Stuff. Know. You know, uh, I came to play golf and you don't have a golf course. So I don't know what I'm going to do. So people who really were coming to please someone else, um, some of them had dramatic experiences because they had no expectations. So they were fully open to whatever occurred. And some, only two, I think, who um, left at the end of the week and they said, you know, I never got out of my left brain. Oh. Nothing happened. And with them, I checked with them later and found that even though they did not feel they had seen angels or touched God or had these incredible, magnificent, numinous experiences, they felt that their life was calmer, that they were happier in terms of they noticed the things that were good in their lives more fully and that somehow their 
they were just feeling better. Their business was better. They were making connections with people. Their friendships were a little uh, more satisfying. Um, it sounded as if, even though they didn't have the um, go to Disneyland in the psychic experiences, they had somehow managed to tune into uh, opportunities and possibilities in their life. And um, actually when I came to Gateway, there was a woman who was taking the class for the fifth time because she found that just the relaxation and the disconnecting from the busyness of her world gave her better intuition for business decisions. So even if you're not getting amazing, spectacular experiences in the exercise, the audio exercises, look at other parts of your life and immersing yourself for a week, setting that time aside to just nurture your inner self has a positive impact, I think, both physically, mentally, emotionally, and spiritually. Yep. That's just according to me, that is not Monroe dogma. One of the things that we do during Gateway is that we teach a patterning exercise. It's at the end of the week. And it's how do, how do we take this um, energetic that we have now built up and fill it with intention so that things happen in our lives like we would like. And, um, okay, quick story, because Charlene and I taught this guy, and she'll remember this. I think his name was Derek. This is right. He's given me permission to tell. But all week long, he's not getting anything. Nothing, nothing, nothing. And we get to, um, you know, the middle of the week and Charlene pulls him aside and he said, what is it that you're expecting? And he said, I want to see my, my dead spouse and have a conversation um, with her. And I want to see her with my corporeal eyes. So not in, you know, in the visual sense, he wants to see her there in the middle of an out-of-body experience, which is an interesting thing. I don't know how he was going to do that, but we'll let that go. Anyway, didn't happen during the week. I get a call like two months later. It's Derek. And he says, you know, during my experience at Monroe, I didn't get anything. Didn't get anything, nothing, nothing, nothing. And even during that patterning exercise, I said, I wanted to see my wife corporeally. And he said, it actually happened when I came home, only it didn't happen the way I expected. And what happened was when he came back from Monroe, um, his next door neighbor came over um, to talk to him about, you know, what happened during this week? Because she was all curious. And when she rang the doorbell and he opened it up, he realized that he was madly in love with his next door neighbor, <clears throat> dropped to one knee and proposed on the spot. He actually got what he wanted. He wanted to see his wife with his corporeal eyes. It just wasn't the wife he thought. So these kinds of patterning things, um, it's, it's one of it's uh -huh. So, so often people will start their exploration when they're in at their week at Gateway. And then when they go home, it just starts to bloom and things start to happen. And you begin to realize that you're getting information from all over. And um, so it's not a, a week and done kind of experience. This is, a, this is a week where we say, okay, here you go. Here's these tools. We've sh shown you the initial spots. Now, go and explore, because that's the fun part. Yeah. Yes, the exploration is, your own experience is really where it's at. Yeah, that's, that's what you're looking for. There were other questions about grief and emotional states and ADD and can I do it? Yes, when you go into these expanded states, whatever is most important for you to be aware of, to process, to experience, to embrace, those are the things that come up for you. And as a person who has ADD, ADHD, yes, 
the signals work. <laughs> so we've got, we're, we're running a little short on time, Scott, and I want to make sure we touch on what do you need to do for your home to be supportive of you in the virtual program? Ah, special signals, headsets. Yeah, really good, really good question. We've got several so, people asking that. Okay, so this is a preference. This is my preference. Um, and that is you need a good set of headphones. Um, I prefer over the ear headphones and wired because sometimes with wireless headphones, um, they compress the sound and we would like that to not happen because some of those signals are are better when they're not compressed. So I like over the ear headphones, wired, and um, and then you, it's really helpful to have a computer at home because we're doing this on Zoom and you got all the pictures of your classmates and it's one way to, to bond more easily. Um, you, can, you can stream the sounds either from your computer, so maybe you want a big long cord um, or you can stream it from your phone we, either way, it's fine. That that works out pretty well. Um, quiet. Some place that you can from nine in the morning till six at night, reserve a place which just for you. And you're not going to be interrupted in the middle of, you know, expanded states of consciousness. You're going to be um, safe and secure. That's, that's a lovely thing. And then, <clears throat> excuse me, um, it's five and a half days. So this is like, take a week off from work, just do this thing. And um, in a week, you will move from here to somewhere way over here in terms of your abilities to, um, to know yourself and to understand what abilities you do have. Um, any other? Oh, yeah, of course, you need internet. And it's got to be reasonably quick, like 10 megabytes a second, you know, it's not unreasonable, but you know, it needs to be stable. That helps. Yes. And you do get a take home audio exercise to support you afterwards so that you can continue your process. So another question we received, Scott, was how do I make this a part of my daily experience? Is this really a fast track to meditation? Um, yes, it is a fast track to meditation. It is, um, you know, there are lots of meditation traditions that have grown up over thousands of years, and they are all wonderful. And some of them take a long time to master. We know that people who practice Zen meditation can hold that state where the brain is operating as one unit, but it takes about 20 years, and we can do it in you know, in an hour. So it's, um, it's, it's a fast track and it's also um, guided. So they aren't wandering around in the wilderness, um, which is fun to explore by the way. But if you have an objective for, to get from here to there and you're in the middle of the woods, it's really handy to have a guide that points and says, here, if you follow this path, you'll get to where you want to go. You can stop anytime you want and mess around in the woods, but if that's your objective, we can do that. Say, Charlene, um, we've got like six minutes and there's one point that we haven't made yet that I just want to emphasize. Um, the technology that we use um, is designed to um, help us change our vibratory level. And that vibratory level, um, depending upon you know, what it is that we want to accomplish. So if we want the state of expanded awareness, you know, that is more easily done in Focus 12. If we want to talk to, you know, dead grandma Ginny, that's more easily done in Focus 21. So what we're doing at the Monroe Institute is we're teaching you how to change your vibratory level in a very conscious way so that you can enter into the state that you can do what you most want to do and, and do it well. So now I'm going to flip back to the other question I didn't answer, which was, um, how do I make this a regular practice? One of the lovely things about uh, the Gateway experiences is that we have you use this technology, but at towards the end of the course, we ask you to take the headphones off. 
and begin to practice how to use it without the technology. The technology that we use um, is just training wheels. It gets you going, it teaches you where the portals are, but then once you know what they feel like, all you have to do is close your eyes, remember the feeling, and you're back there just that quick. So in terms of, of um, meditative practice, I would tell you that I use mine all day, every day. It's that, it's that enter into and, and get the expanded states of awareness and get answers and that sort of thing. And then um, for me, this is me now, not everybody's, I, I kind of ebb and flow where I'll, you know, listen to a 40 minute exercise every couple of weeks or so just to kind of refresh my memory as to what that's like. But um, I use the tools every day, which means I'm in that space every day. And, you know, once you've been there, you don't forget it. It's yours forever. It's a skill that you've learned and you can tap into at a moment's notice. We call it the one breath technique. So it's, it's quick. Yes. These are fully natural, safe, states of consciousness that we slide into at different times in our lives. What we're doing is we're learning to go there, recognize that's where we are mm -hmm. and do something intentionally. Yep. Um, so yes, these are things you use, I use all through the day to tap into the extra information and intuition. Now, yeah, because I think, I think you said a key word there um, and that is that uh, we can recognize them. And, you know, if we want to be in a certain space, um, we just have to recall what it felt like. And that's how we recognize, you know, where we are and how we move around in the non-physical universe. Yeah. Yeah. Deep into the state is a little different than just deep into the physical world and touching into it, but they're both very valuable. Now, I just posted on the chat uh, links to get more information on the Gateway Voyage virtual retreat and the seven day introduction to Gateway Challenge. Oh yes, we have to tell them about that. Yes. Ah, sorry, gee, I almost forgot. Um, and somehow I just turned fuzzy. Oh well, hang on, I'm gonna turn off my camera and then back on again. There, that's better. Um, what we have done is created this thing called the seven day introduction to gateway challenge. And what it means is if you are interested in taking a gateway and you really want to prepare for your gateway, um, we have seven different tips and techniques that will help prepare you. And I, if you finish those seven, you are going to be ready to go. Mm -hmm. um, not to be, I did them. They're wonderful. What can you say? <laughs> they're, um, they're easy to do. Some are 10 minutes long. Some I have you listen to a, um, a separate exercise that's 30 minutes long. They're each, each very different during the day. So um, take one, see if that resonates with you. Um, I think you'll find that they'll be um, really helpful when you take your gateway experience. And they're not necessary or essential. Nope. Nope. Because these are, <laughs> they are not because we've gone for 50 years without them. They just got created recently. <laughs> so if you feel that the Gateway Voyage is something that is intriguing and interesting to you, that you think would be beneficial and helpful to where you are in your journey, please check it out. We have several virtual programs coming up. I'm going to be teaching one, I think it's in June, it's in the middle of the summer, uh, but we've got four scheduled so far. And it's amazing how powerful the virtual setting is. Now we all love residential, um, but we're not going to be having residential for the rest of this year, is my understanding. Scott, do you want to say anything about that? Yes. Um... You know, we started out as a residential retreat center and it's near and dear to my heart to the experience. Um, but we found that during COVID that the um, uh, programs that we do on Zoom are really powerful. The results are the same. Uh, the bonding that happens between 
the participant actually happens a little bit faster in, in a Zoom meeting because there aren't you know people sitting in the back of the room and not participating. So we we love this format and and I love it for a couple of reasons. A, you save you save some money. That's nice. You save some time because you don't have to travel. But you also get to experience these things in your home, which means these skills that you have, you now have a chance to practice them right there where you live. And so it's easier to integrate um, as you come out of the program or even at night when you're, you know, just just playing around. So I I really like the Zoom meetings, um, our virtual programming. It's it's good. Um, I did not mention, but everybody that attends this today, uh, we will send you a link to this, uh, the seven day challenge. We're gonna open that up next week. And um, so you'll, you'll get that uh, very quickly. And you will get a link to a recording of today's meeting in case you want to look at it again, or if there's someone you wanna share this with who wasn't able to be here in live. So thank you all very much for coming. I so hope you got your questions answered. If not, email us. We will be glad to talk with you and help you say, what is my next step on my journey and how can Monroe and the Gateway Voyage fit into that? Yep, info at monroeinstitute.org. Say that again. Info at monroeinstitute.org. That'll work. Thank you. Thanks, everybody.